Hey, Knowledge Family, how's everybody doing today? I hope everybody is doing well. Hearts up for the chat. Thank y'all so much for all y'all support. Thank you, thank you. I know y'all get tired of me saying that, but hey, you always got to give thanks to the people who always giving you support, showing up for you, letting you know that they have your back. They always behind you. They always viewing, even for the ones that say, hey, um, I didn't catch the live premiere, but I'm here for the replay. I didn't catch the live, but I'm here for the replay. Thank you all so much. It's greatly appreciated. I want everybody to know that. Love to all of you. Hearts in the chat, hearts in the chat for just y'all being good supporters, awesome supporters. Thank you so much. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, yeah, and uh, shout out to the outstanding moderators. Hearts up for the moderators, Kendall R. and Hunter Green. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hearts up because they do a lot uh, as moderating and things behind the scene as well. So thank y'all so much, so much. Okay, family, let's get right down to it. So y'all see the title up there, say exclusive. Oh yeah, we got an exclusive. Khalil and his mom, remember y'all, they went to go visit the Robinson family is what Shanquilla mother said right after Shanquilla passed. And Shanquilla mother said that Khalil and his mother came by the house to, you know, talk to her about the alcohol poisoning, okay? But in that visit, I'm trying to figure out why did Khalil and his mom forget to say this? And it's coming right up, family. But let me please talk about, I heard Khalil, I heard that you were supposed to be working at a school around children. That's what they say now. That's the word out here on the streets. It's the word out here on the YouTube streets. It's the word all over the internet. It's word all over the sidewalk, everywhere, Khalil. A lot of people are saying that uh, you were supposed to be working at a school somewhere in North Carolina. Wow. Yeah, trying to be a teacher in the school system or... They say that you're trying to be a janitor or a coach or a cafeteria person or whatever you was doing around the school system trying to work there or was working there. But, see, a lot of people was wondering, Khalil, how would Khalil get hired at a school? How, how, how did that even happen? Because, see, Khalil is a criminal who deleted Shanquilla Robinson down there in Cabo, Mexico. Yes, yeah, see, Khalil planned the whole attack. Khalil lured Shanquilla to Mexico. Khalil also called Shanquilla's mother and tried to extort $5,000 from her while they was in Mexico and Shanquilla was deceased. But he didn't tell her that Shanquilla was deceased. He told a lie and said that Shanquilla was being worked on by paramedics and had alcohol poison, which was all a big tale, okay? That's what Khalil did. And then Khalil came back. He fled Mexico and left his so-called best friend, because he's supposed to be the best friend. So he fled Mexico and left his best friend down there, deceased, wouldn't tell her mother or father where she was because he was too busy covering up the lie of alcohol poison. So he didn't tell them where they baby girl was, okay? And then Khalil comes back on United States soil and goes over to Shanquilla's mother house, sister house, or whoever house, and told them that Shanquilla passed of alcohol poison, okay? And he was in their face, just with a straight face, telling a big old tale in her mother's face, trying to comfort her mother while her mother is grieving, knowing he was the reason why the mother-daughter was deceased anyway. Oh, he have a lot of evil traits inside of him. Yeah, he did that. 
And then after he did that with that visit, he bought the two girls that's responsible as well for Shanquilla's death over to her mother's house. And him and the other two girls, Dejanae Jackson and Winter Donovan, went over to Shanquilla's mother's house and sat down there just as calm and told her a big old tale about alcohol poisoning after they knew they had attacked her and deleted her. And then Khalil comes back to Shanquilla's mother's house with his mother to tell Shanquilla's mother the same old lie. <laughs> so that's why people was wondering, how did Khalil get a job inside of a school? Because this is a very dangerous person. Very dangerous person. So people was wondering that. So, uh, he was involved in a deletion. He was an accessory to deletion. He cleaned up a crime scene and tampered with evidence of Shanquilla and went through Shanquilla's phone, deleting messages, deleting all kind of things out of Shanquilla's phone, just tampering with crucial evidence. But Khalil, you want to tell me you want to work around kids or you have been working around kids, whichever one it was. The world was trying to figure out, the majority of people in the world was trying to figure out how did you even get this job at the cafe at the um school. Now some say you was in that cafeteria. I don't know how true that is. Some say that you was a teacher or whatever you was doing, but how did you get that? Okay? Because you did a lot more criminal behavior than what I just said. Mm-hmm. So remember, family. When we had discussed, now this is not the exclusive, the exclusive is coming up, family. Just hold on, because I just want to, I just want to find out what Khalil, why Khalil is at a school. He shouldn't even be around kids at all. This is a dangerous man, along with his other five friends. So, remember family, when we talked about Khalil Cook video. Do y'all remember that? I'm going to give some people a time to think. When we talked about Khalil Cook video, you know, I did a, a video on Khalil some months ago. What did I say inside that video? Do anybody remember? I just give about five seconds. Do anybody remember? Okay. Probably not. Because see, when I heard about this with Khalil, with so-called himself being a teacher at a school or janitor at a school or whatever he was doing at a school, okay? Remember, family, when we talked about Khalil, we also talked about Khalil's grandmother, right? Remember that? Uh-huh, obituary. All of this is public records. Fair use for everything, public records all over the internet, you know. But check this out, family. Yeah, I remember when we did that. Remember, uh, his grandmother name is Florestine Penn, right? Okay, so family, do y'all remember this right here? Y'all remember this family? Florestine Penn, that's Khalil's grandmother. And it says, Florestine was a graduate of Martinville High School, class of 1972. She was an employee of Charlotte Mecklenburg School System as a cafeteria worker. So, see, Khalil, grandmother, worked in the school system. And people kept wondering, I wonder how he get that job. Uh, you know, uh, some people were saying, did he have help getting that job or what? But let me tell you. He had his grandmother did work at the school system, okay? School system, y'all see that? Uh-huh. For a very long time. So Khalil knows some people because his grandmother knew some people and things like that. But even with that family, uh, Khalil has a family member that uh, works as a language arts teacher. And other family members that works inside the school system in North Carolina. Okay? So understand that. 
Khalil has a family member that is a language arts teacher in the school system of North Carolina. And he also has other family members that work inside the school system in North Carolina. And his grandmother also was an employee of the school system as a cafeteria worker. Okay, so Khalil and Khalil mother and things like that, they know a lot of people that works in the school system. Not to say that any of those people got Khalil the job. No, that's not what he's saying at all. But I know a lot of people are saying, well, how did he get it? He must know some people. Well, we obviously know that Khalil know a lot of people inside North Carolina school system. Okay, so that's most likely what happened. Even if they didn't, he still knows some people. His mother knows some people and people that knew his grandmother know he's the grandson of the grandmother who worked inside the school system. OK, so it just go round and round like a merry-go-round. OK, point blank period. That's going on with Khalil. OK, so now uh, my thing is. See, Khalil has a lot of different identities and all that kind of stuff, too. Yeah, he does. He has a. A lot of different identities going on, as y'all see up there on the screen, you know. And uh, we noticed that one of his recent pictures, you know, he's letting his hair grow out and uh, beard grow out and all that good stuff right there. But Khalil still basically looks the same no matter what he tries to do. You know, he basically still looks the same with a lot of hair, okay? But the thing is, Khalil, and family, I'm getting to that exclusive, but I just wants to get on Khalil's bumper right quick because I'm trying to figure out what or what are you doing trying to work around kids, first of all. What are you trying to teach the kids, for, you know, next? What you trying to teach them, Khalil? Are you trying to teach them how to cover up crimes? Are you trying to teach them how to be a criminal? Because you did all of these as a criminal. You trying to teach them how to extort money from their parents or from other people? You trying to teach them how to steal people's phones and delete messages and delete evidence out of phone and all that stuff? You trying to teach them how to lie with a straight face? Because, see, you do all that. You do all that. And see, the thing about Khalil is, family, is that Khalil also refused medical help for Shinkula. So how do we know he wouldn't refuse medical help for kids at the school if something happens to one of those kids? Because we do know for a fact it has in a lot of his documents that we have read that he refused help to his best friend, Shinkula Robinson, when she was in crucial need of help. But he refused medical help. Because he didn't want her to get help. He wanted her to pass away down there in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So how could we trust a person like that around kids? You know? He allowed criminals to come into the villa and attack Shinquilla. He set up the plan and he went through with the plan. For Shinquilla to get attacked and deleted in Cabo, Mexico. Okay? So, that's what we're trying to figure out. If he let that happen and planned that to happen, how do we know he won't plan something to happen in any type of school he works at or any type of job he works at? How do we know he won't try to set the people up where he's employed at and let criminals in to attack? Because he did it before. He did it to Shanquilla. Just as easy, cool, and he didn't mind doing it. And the thing about it is he lied about it and said it was alcohol poison until the video came out and surfaced over the Internet that it wasn't alcohol poison. She Shaquilla had been attacked and deleted. But Khalil here stuck with that story of alcohol poison. He planned the attack, let the criminals come right on in the villa to attack Shaquilla. And then he lied about the attack. 
So what make us trust Khalil that he wouldn't set up a school, a job, a restaurant job he had? What is to tell us that he won't set these people up wherever he's employed at? Because he's known for doing that. And he's known for doing it very smoothly. And he will lie in everybody's face, even authorities, because he lied in the authorities' face in Mexico. He will lie to the authorities and say he don't know how the attack happened on his job. When all actuality, he planned it and set it up. Because that's exactly what he did in Cabo, Mexico, to Shanquilla Robertson in that villa. So I really had a hard time understanding how did he get inside of a school system as an employee. Mm hmm. Yeah, Khalil, I really did have a hard time with that one right there. Yeah. Mm hmm. So. Let's go on to our exclusive. Yes, yes, yes. Here's the exclusive family. Mm-hmm. Everybody put claps up for the excuse, exclusive, excuse me. Chats up, hearts up, chats get up. Everybody throw fire in the chat, fire in the chat, hearts in the chat, because we got an exclusive on here for Khalil. Mm-hmm. So, let's go on to it. Because, let's talk about Khalil. This is the exclusive right here, family, okay? Starting right here. Let's talk about Khalil and his mother. I told y'all what they did. Him and his mother went over to Shinquilla's mother's house. And Khalil's mother was right beside him when he was telling the Robinson family the lie about alcohol boys. Okay? But what they forgot to tell the Robertson family, while Khalil and his mother were sitting there, they forgot to tell the Robertson family that Khalil's mother, at one time, needed help from the court system herself. Uh-huh. And she needed help from 911. Yes, she did. At one time, she did. Mm-hmm. Uh, Khalil and his mother made that trip over there to Salamandra, Shanquilla mother house, or Shanquilla sister house, and sat right down there in that family face. And Khalil's mother, Komika Pen, mm -hmm, sat right down there with her son. Why he was telling the lie of alcohol poison. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh Khalil mother knew everything that her son Khalil did to Shinquilla. Yeah, she knew it. Mm-hmm. She, she she knew it, and the reason why I said she knew it because she's never come back to correct it with the Robinson family. Because see, once you go and sit over somebody's house, right? Once you go sit over somebody's house and then you realize that your child has told a big tale or if you didn't know at that time, you will come back and correct that. And it seemed like you would have him to come back and correct it. But it didn't happen. Right, family? So, uh, she didn't even try to convince her son to do the right thing. She didn't try to convince Khalil to do the right thing. Which is very concerning. Okay? Now, this is all public records that I'm getting ready to say, family. All public records. Now, Khalil's mother wanted something to done about a crime that happened to her in 2004. Right? Khalil and his mother wanted something to be done about the crime that happened against his mother in 2004. But she's not speaking up for the crime that was done to Shinquilla Robertson. Ain't that a bunch of mess? Uh-huh. See, her son, let me put it this way, family. Khalil's mother 
got robbed. Uh-huh, she got robbed back in 2004 and wanted the court system to help her, wanted 911 to help her. She wanted the justice system to help her because she was robbed. But her son, right here, robbed Shanquilla of her life. And she ain't saying nothing. She ignoring that. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. Because, see, right here, you will see, family, it says, On the morning of 19 April 2004, Kamika Pin drove her three-year-old son to the Medicaid dentist's office in Charlotte for a three-appointment. Okay? So, now. Let's talk about it, family. Now, some of this I have redacted and cut off because it's some more ladies involved in this that they're not connected to Khalil's mother in this case right here. But all of them, ha this crime here happened like the day after each other, okay? So I'm not showing their names because they're not the ones that went over to the Robinson's house and sat down with them. And let their son lie and never came back to correct the lie. But they wanted the court system to help them with their situation that they had regarding the criminal. But don't want the Robinsons to get justice for the crime that happened against their daughter. How biased is that? Wow. Wow. So anyway, family. Yeah, I will see where it says North Carolina Court of Appeals, okay? Um, in 2004, this is where Khalil Mother claimed that she was robbed by a man, okay? But they had the courts, the court thing went to 2006, okay? So this is what it is. So the man, Mr. Wells, that's his name who allegedly robbed uh, Khalil's mother, okay? But anyway, Mr. Wells put in an appeal, okay? Because he said, look here, I take the rap for the other crimes that y'all got me with the day before this chick here, uh, Komika, whatever, said that I robbed her. I don't want nothing to do with hers. I take the rap for this right here that I done the day before, but her incident that she said I did to her, no, I don't want her case joined with these other cases. Because, see, that's what they were trying to do, family. The man, the court system was trying to combine all these cases together. The, the four people that this man here robbed like a day before. And then the next day, he so-called robbed Khalil's mother. Kamika opinion, okay? And he's saying he appealed it because he don't want Khalil's mother case, her robbery that he was supposed to be involved in, he don't want her case to join in on the other cases. So that's why he was appealing. So that's where you see in North Carolina Courts of Appeals, okay? November 2006, okay? That he appealed this and you'll see it says state of North Carolina and this is that. But all this is public records, okay? It's, it's right there, public for anybody to see, anybody to pull up and look at. I just, uh, a lot of, you know, if somebody want to pull it up and they can have the whole document, they can. I'm just not going to do it because those other ladies' names are in there. And I don't want to expose those ladies' whole name, you know, because... They don't have nothing to do with this. They didn't go over there to the Robinson's house sitting in front of their face uh, lying about alcohol poisoning. They didn't take their kids over to the Robinson's house and listen to the, you know, lie of alcohol poisoning either. So anyway, so he appealed it, okay? Because he said he do not, he don't mind the other cases being together, but what he don't want is the Kamika Penn case on him, okay? Not joined in this. He want that case to be separate. Not along with this. And we'll discuss why he wanted this separate. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So anyway, 
as y'all see right here, family, it says, appealed by the defendant from judgment into 23 September 2005 on Judge Timothy Kincaid in Mecklenburg Superior Court, heard in the Court of Appeals 16 October 2006. Okay, so that's when the man put in his appeal. He wanted uh, his appeal and his lawyer put into the appeal because they did not want Khalil's mother charge to be on him. I mean, like, he did not want her case to join in to the other ones. He wanted to go to court for the three things he did the day before, and then he can go to court another time for what he supposedly had did to Khalil's mother, Khalil, Kamika. Okay? So check that out. He got right here. I'm trying to make sure y'all can see that family. Okay. Yeah, y'all can see that. Okay. So, into 23 September 2005, consistent with jury verdict, finding him guilty of robbery with a dangerous weapon, common law robbery, and attaining habitual felon status. For the reason stated below, we find no error. Okay, so he was trying to appeal and say, no, I don't want y'all to join her case with the other cases because it's not fair. Hers was done a day after I, you know, took stuff from the other people. I did one crime the day before and then her crime was the next day. So what he's saying is don't add the next day crime to the day before crime. Y'all follow me now, family. Please follow me. Write it down if you have to, okay? So that's what he was doing. But the court is saying we don't care about when the crime happening, You that you did a crime a week ago and then four days later and then two days later. The point is the crimes are similar. So we're going to join them together so we see no error in joining them together, okay? But he was trying to appeal to not have those cases put together. He wanted them separate. Now, you see facts. Y'all see it? Now, it says, prior to trial on 28 July 2005, the state files a motion for joinder of defendant's cases and serve the motion on defendant's attorney the same day. The trial courts allowed joinder, okay? Meaning that the court is going to allow for Khalil's mother case to be joined in with the other crimes this man did the day before. But he was hoping that he can appeal it and not let her crime be inside of that trial along with the other three crimes that he did, okay? So, now, hang in there, family, because as you see, Khalil's mother was a victim of a crime before. So, she wanted something done about her crime, but she's not speaking up for the crime that her son did on Shinquilla. Why is that? Yeah, yeah, see, that ain't right right there. Yeah, that's what you call low down right there. But anyway, let's finish, okay? So now y'all will see it says, and like I said, some of this stuff is, it got some other women name in it, and, and let me tell y'all what happened. The, the day before he did what he did to Khalil's mother, this man, Mr. Wells, okay? The day before, he did, like, three robberies. The first one was he took some ladies' purses or something like that. Allegedly, that's what they said he did to two ladies while they was out shopping or whatever, right? Then they said that same day he went inside of a restaurant and he had the cashier girl pull out all the money in the restaurant and give him the money and she had to empty the registers and this stuff right here, okay? Then the next day, 
Kamika Penn said he robbed her. Okay? So that's how that is. So now, y'all will see right up top. It was talking about, that's why I just cut it right there, because it has the ladies' names and all that stuff, and I'm, I'm not trying to put them ladies' names in this stuff, okay? So, it, but you will see where it says register, that he took money out of the register, he had them dump money out of the register and all that. Now it says, defendant grabbed more money and left the restaurant through the kitchen, okay? So that's what they said he did at the restaurant uh, robbery, okay? Then, check this out. On the morning of 19 April, April 2004, okay? On the morning of 19 April 2004, Kamika Penn drove her three-year-old son to the Medicaid dentist office in Charlotte for an, okay, for an, let me, uh, for an appointment, and I'm going to have to do it like this, family, because it's it's some names on here that I'm going to make sure that don't be shown as some other ladies, okay? But anyway, as she was taking her son to the dental appointment, okay? And then you'll see where it says, Upon parking her Honda Accord, defendant opened the um, door and told Penn to get out of the car because he had a weapon. Okay, y'all see what it really say, but I'm going to say weapon. Uh, Penn did not see the weapon. Penn was scared. So, she grabbed her son and proceeded to the dental office building. Okay? Uh, defendant told Penn to give him her purse. But Penn kept walking towards the dental office. That's what she did. She kept walking towards the dental office. And I'm sorry, family, just bear with me because I don't want to show some of these people names, okay? But I am, um, you know, I am showing y'all what I can, okay? So she kept walking to the dentist's office. Now, he asked for her purse, okay? As y'all see right here. He asked her, he he said, give him her purse, right? Uh, but Penn kept walking. She was, you know, that's it. Khalil's mother kept walking towards the building, okay? And then Penn went into the office and called 911, okay? Now, the jury found defendant guilty of robbery, Okay? With a weapon of common law robbery of Kamika Penn, okay, and of felon status, the jury did not reach a verdict. Defendants first contend the trial court aired by denying his motion to dismiss the common law robbery charge based on insignificant of the evidence, okay? Now, what they're saying, family, is, you know, they said that he, uh, Kamika, Khalil's mother, told the police and the courts and everything that uh, he, she rolled up to the dentist's office once she got to the dentist's office, okay, uh, he came out of nowhere and he said, give me your purse. And then she's like, she didn't give him the purse. She just kept walking, okay? And then when she kept walking, she just went on in there to the dentist's office, called 911 to get some help, and then the man took off in her Honda Accord in her car, okay? Now, that's what she said, okay? And so... uh. He wanted the court to dismiss that because family, he said Kamika Penn gave him her car. Okay, we'll get it's gonna tell that too, so we'll get into that. But anyway, let's finish reading it. So it said, Defendant first contends the trial. Okay, we did that. Defendant asserts the state failed to present substantial evidence. 
that she did not give defendant permission to take her vehicle, we disagree. The standards for ruling of a motion to dismiss is where they didn't dismiss it, okay? So, uh, he's saying that, no, I don't want her case attached to mine. This is why he appealed, family. I don't want her case uh, attached to mine because she lied. I did not uh, try to take her person whatever she gave, and I didn't take her car. She gave me her car. I ain't take her car. So her, what 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 happened between that thing right there that was going on with Khalil mother? He's saying, uh uh, don't do that. Now I did do this with the other three people the day before, but her, uh uh, she gave me her car. So the court saying, nah, by looking at the evidence. You know, we come to the conclusion that she did not give you her car. You see right here, it says evidence that she did not give defendant permission to take her vehicle. So they say they disagree with his appeal. And it still stands that her case is going to be joined with the other cases that they have on him. Okay. So now, right here, family. It says, so, you know, they they call what happened to Khalil mother common law robbery, okay? And I want people to understand that's called common law robbery. It's not called, oh, no, uh, it, it's not because she was common law married to the man or something like that. No, they call it common law robbery because the crimes are similar to each other that he did and they all happen within like a three to four day time period so they're going to join all those cases together because he did those crimes so closely together and they were so similar until they cause it common law robbery okay so that's why they call it common law robbery okay so as y'all see it says, uh, common law robbery is a felonious, non-consensual taking of money or personal property from the person or present of another by means of violence or fear. Okay? Here, defendant approach pen. When she arrived at the dentist's office with her young son, defendants told Penn to get out of her vehicle because she had, because he had a weapon. Penn, who had never seen defendant before, grabbed her child and walked away, leaving the keys in the car. Okay, so that's what they say happen okay now this young son they said this was in 2004 that they said that she grabbed her young son um this was i this is not clear because you know khalil has a younger brother so i'm thinking this was khalil's younger brother i don't think this was khalil that she had the day she alleged that she got robbed in 2004 because Khalil brother is probably about three or four years under him so I'm thinking this is the youngest brother that she had not Khalil because if you add it up 2004 uh to now that's like 19 years and then they said at the beginning that the son was about three years old so that's that's about 22 23 years old so I'm thinking that's his youngest brother because Khalil is in his like 25, 20, 26 years old. Okay, he's in between that. He's older than that. So I'm thinking this was Khalil's youngest brother that she had with him, with her. Okay. So, uh, once again, they are saying, here, defendant approached Penn when she arrived at that dental office with her young son. Defendant told Penn to get out of her vehicle because he had a weapon. P 
European who had never seen defendant grabbed her child and walked away, leaving the keys in the car because she was scared. Penn called 911 as defendant drove away in her car. We concluded that based upon the evidence considered in the light most favorable to the state, a jury will reasonably infer that defendant took Penn's vehicle against her will by threat of force and by putting her in fear and thereby committed common law robbery accordingly. The trial court properly denied the motion to dismiss so they're going to put that case all together okay uh defendant also contends the trial court erred by granting the prosecutor's motion for gender of all the charges so they're going to put all those charges and join them together the crimes that he did the day before at the restaurant and the other ladies and Khalil's mother, okay, and the consolidations of charges is governed by North Carolina State, okay. Now, it says up here that she was scared and it was by force and all that. She so she know how it feels to be a victim of something. She know how it feels to be a victim of a crime, but see when it came to Shanquilla being a victim of a crime. She turned her head. So, see, she wanted the courts to help her when she was victimized. But then she put in roadblocks in Shanquilla's justice because it's her son. Really? 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 You see what I'm saying, family? Really? So, let's uh, finish reading this. Um, in which, okay, in which joinder of offenses, two or more offenses may be joined in one pleading for the trial when the offense, whether felonies or misdemeanors or both, are based on the same acts and transaction or on the same series of acts or transactions connected together or constituting parts of the single scheme or plan. Each offense must be stated in the separate count as regards by GS 15A-924. Okay, so they're just telling uh, him that they're going to be joined together because um, they are similar. Okay, the crimes are similar and they happen so closely together. Okay, a defendant... Now, y'all, y'all, y'all make sure that y'all understand this. A defendant is not prejudiced by the joinder of two crimes unless the charges are so separate in time and placed and so distinct in circumstances as to render this consolidation unjust and prejudicial to defend it. Okay. So that prejudicial is what they're trying to say is that they are not being prejudiced to the case. Prejudicial of joining these cases together. So what they're saying is they don't want anybody to feel like they're being uh, prejudiced against this man by doing putting all of these cases into one they just letting people know that this is how they do because all the crimes were so closely related and they happened like a day after each other he did them like a day after each other so when they caught him they put all crimes together even though they happened different days he wants to have it because it happened in different days he want to do no, take me to trial for this day I did that crime. Then let me do another uh, trial for this crime that I did another day. No, they said they're not taking up all that time. They're putting them all into one. Okay? So that was the purpose of that. And then it says, made a motion of sovereign pursuit to NCGS 
Okay. Nevertheless, the crimes here took place in Charlotte within a 30 hour period. See what I'm saying? So he did these crimes within a 30 hour period. When he did something to those ladies, he did something to like two or three other ladies when they was walking or doing shopping or something. Then he turned around and did that to the restaurant, uh, took money from the restaurant. Then the next day, he ran into Khalil's mother and she said he did what he did to her. Okay. So um, you'll see, furthermore, defendant act alone and threatened the victims by brandishing a weapon or by claiming to have a weapon no evidence in the record tends to suggest that the trial court abused the discretion in joining the case for trial we find no error no error judge tyson okay so what he's saying is you know he did his appeal but they see no error in joining those cases together because they are related and the, the, they not relate like the robbery are so similar to their making them they putting them all together and relating them together because it's somewhat of the same thing that he did within a 30 hour period okay so now the thing is family is like we said Khalil mother put herself Wow, in Shanquilla's case, by going over there to visit the Robinsons with her son. Okay, now she the one that Khalil's mother is the one that went over there to Miss Salamantra, telling her while her son is telling Miss Robinson about alcohol poison, which he know that was a lie that he deleted. Shanquilla. Okay, so Khalil's mother, Miss Robinson said Khalil's mother went over there with him. Uh, Ms. Robinson said it. Um, Shanquilla's sister said it, that Khalil and his mother came over there and um, told her alcohol poison. Khalil was telling her why the mother was with Khalil. Okay? And then Khalil got sick and felt like he had to, you know, he, he, his stomach was turning and he just couldn't take it. He was telling the mother that, oh, I'm just so hurt about Shanquilla till I'm getting sick. And then they, him, and his mother left Shanquilla's mother's house because he so-called was getting sick. But the mother went with him, okay? So, she put herself in this because she went over there with Khalil. But she didn't go over there to tell the truth with Khalil. She didn't make Khalil tell the truth. She went over there with Khalil with that alcohol poisoning lie. Okay, and like I said, even if she had found out that the alcohol poison thing was a tale later, she still never went back over to this lady's house and said, "You know what? We so sorry. I'm I'm bringing Khalil here to the forefront to tell the truth because I know what it feels like to be a victim of a crime." See, she done turned her head on Shanquilla's crime. But she didn't turn her head on her own when she went through it. When somebody victimized her. She didn't turn her head then. She wanted the court's help. Mm-hmm. And y'all want to know where Khalil got his trifling behavior from? There it is right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all want to know where he got that behavior from? You're looking at it. Yeah, because see, Khalil's mother knew how it feels to be a victim of a crime. But she didn't care about Shanquilla being a victim of a crime. She didn't care that Shanquilla had been a victim of a crime by the hands and the plans of her own son, Khalil Cook. And I'm like Mr. Robinson, I'm finna use Mr. Robinson's word. How you gonna fix your mouth? To, pre to prevent justice for Shanquilla. But you wanted justice for your crime. That was done against you. How you gonna fix your mouth 
to even go over there to Miss Salamandra, knowing that you was a victim of a crime yourself. And now you are quiet about the same crime. Your son, at least that man just robbed. She said the man robbed her. I don't know. The man said he didn't rob her. The man said she gave him them keys. We'll get on that in a minute. Tell you how I feel about that right there. But anyway, how you going to fix your mouth to prevent justice for Shanquilla crime? But you want justice for your crime. Ain't that about selfish? See, because in 2004, she wanted the public and the court system to help her when she was done wrong by a criminal. But she don't want the public and the court system to help Shanquilla Robertson or the Robertson family against the dangerous and brutal crime her son did. Make that make sense. So you want somebody else to go to jail for their crime for doing something against you. But you don't want your son to go to jail for something he did to someone else. Wow. Wow. And y'all want to know where Khalil trifling behaviors come from? Hey, this public record. It tells you right there, family. It tells you right there. Trifling behavior. Yeah. Because make that make sense to me. So Khalil's mother in 2004 wanted a criminal who robbed her and pulled a weapon on her to be held accountable for doing that to her. But she don't want nobody to hold her son accountable for deletion. You want somebody to be held accountable just for stealing your car. But you don't want your son to be held accountable for deleting someone? Come on now. Come on now. She wants the court system to lock up Mr. Wells, who it was back then, that's his name. She wants the court system to lock up this criminal who took her vehicle against her will. But she don't want the court system to lock up her son, Khalil, for deleting Shanquilla. Come on now. Khalil's mom has selfish justice syndrome. She got selfish justice syndrome. Yes, she do. Yes, she do. She wants the justice system to jump above and beyond for her in 2004 when that man told her to get out the car and give him her purse and give him her car. Oh, she wanted the justice system to jump above and beyond for her, but not for Shanquilla Robinson in 2022 when her son deleted Shanquilla Robinson. Wow, wow, wow. Khalil's mother told the authorities she feared for her life and, you know, while she was going into the dentist's office. So she feared for her life. She called 911. She was so afraid of this criminal until she left her keys in the car because she was so afraid of this man and that this man had a weapon or, you know, a pow pow and the man took off in her car. So she wanted the authorities and the court system to do something about this criminal and hold this criminal accountable for taking her stuff because she was a victim of a crime. But now that the roles are reversed and her son is the dangerous criminal, she don't give a damn about no victims no more. Oh, because she don't care nothing about Shanquilla. Because if she did, she would have came back over to this lady house. She went over to this lady house and with her son to say alcohol poison. Once she had a realizer, I think she already knew what happened. But let's just say if she didn't already know when they went over there, when she found out she never bought her stank rump 
back over here to Miss Robinson and clear this thing up and say, you know what, I'm so sorry, I do not agree with what my son did because I definitely know what it feels like to be a victim of a crime because a man pulled a pow pow weapon on me and he tried to take my car. He did take my car. And I had my child and we was running in the dentist's office for our life. So I know what it means to be a victim. So we're going to make Khalil tell the truth. Khalil, you need to go tell the truth and tell these people. This is what she should have been doing. Cause telling her son, hey, you know, I, mama been a victim of a crime before. And uh, it could have turned wrong, son. And I made it through that. So you need to go up there and tell these people the truth. I don't know if they'll give you less time because you're telling the truth or what, but you need to come out and tell the truth. No, she didn't do that because she's biased. She don't care. See, she done used the system already in 2004, but she cares nothing about Shanquilla justice here in 2022 or 2023. How trifling. Now that the roles are reversed and her son is the dangerous criminal, she don't give two flips that Shanquilla was victimized by her son. No, it don't matter. It don't matter. See, the justice system helped her, but she don't want the justice system to help the Robson family. Why? Why? You know, she knew how it feels to be a target or a victim. But all that goes clean out the window if someone else is the victim at the hands of her son, Khalil Cook. All that go out the window. She wanted something done about her crime family, but don't want nothing done about Shanquilla's crime that her son committed and helped aid and abed in it, clean up a crime. See, her son's crime was worse than the man who did to her car. How come Khalil couldn't just take Shanquilla's car and leave it at that? No, your son planned and deleted a one. You don't want to speak up for that. But you was making a whole lot of damn noise when it came to your ass. Wow. Wow. As long as her son is committing the crimes and deleting people, oh, it's straight. It's all good. It ain't no problem. She turned her head. She turned a blind eye. But if someone else commit a crime against her, they got to be held accountable. Oh, they got to go up there to the courthouse. Oh, she want that person up under the jail. Oh, she want that person to do time. And she pushed for time for Mr. Wells, and Mr. Wells got some time for that. So how come if Mr. Wells can do time for you, why your son can't do time for her? Ooh, calm down, cafe. Because I'm about to ride her bumper. Y'all got them tow trucks out. Do y'all have them tow trucks out? I'm about tired of this here trifling backyard trash. How you gonna use the court system for you? But when it's time for the Robinson family to use that same court system in North Carolina, you quiet and throwing roadblocks in it because you don't want your son to be held accountable for the brutal deletion he did on Shaquilla Robinson. So the court system only good for you, huh? So the court system is only good for Khalil Mama and the Khalil and Khalil family. It's only good for them. It ain't good for the Robinsons. Nah, we turn a blind eye when it comes to that, huh? We gonna use the system if something happened to us. Wow. 
Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You know? That's what I'm talking about. Now, we see where Kaleo got all this trifling behavior from, right? Where he got using people from. Remember how he used Shanquilla? See, we see where he got it from. Because see, his mama loved to use the court system when it pertains to her. But when her son do something, then she throw roadblocks in the court system or in the justice so Shanquilla can't get it. But she didn't want nobody throwing no monkey wrenches and no roadblocks when she, so-called, got robbed. No, she, she, she didn't want nobody to throw nothing in that one. But she ain't got no problem with throwing some monkey wrenches, help throwing monkey wrenches for her son, so her son don't have to be held accountable for deleting Shaquilla Rops. Uh-huh. So, now y'all see where Khalil got used in people, because you remember he used Shaquilla. He used Shaquilla. And you can tell that now, because if that's Khalil I seen in front of that school, looking all like a homeless man that needing a loaf of bread, and some apple juice, because that's definitely what he looked like. That he had on some homeless clothes, needing a piece of bread with a swallow of apple juice. See, the money ain't coming in no more for him. He got to work. See, remember, he wanted, see, he called himself doing the clothesline when Shanquilla was here. What happened to your clothesline, Khalil? What happened to your clothesline? Your clothesline went down in the dump, in the gutter, in sewer trash because you was trash anyway. It was Shanquilla helping you on your feet. And soon as Shanquilla left here, it didn't take you not even a year to fall off the damn toilet bowl. Just straight doo-doo. Ain't got nothing going for yourself. Not the way you were looking at it. If that's you, you was looking real hardcore like you was on that sugar booger too. Ooh, that would have looked like to me. But uh, anyway, back to uh, your mama over here. Uh, over here. Back to her. Now, y'all see where Khalil got used and people from. She used the system... For her benefit, but didn't want the Robinsons to use that same court system for their benefit. Khalil mother got justice for the crime that was done against her. But she didn't want Shanquilla to get that same justice in North Carolina for the crime her son did against Shanquilla. Robinson. She don't want her son to go to jail. She don't want her son to go to prison. But it was quick for her to voice and talk loud for Mr. Wells to go to prison. She don't want her son to be held accountable. But she wanted that man there that did that to her held accountable. You have to be a very evil person to use the court system for your benefit and for you to get justice for what happened to you. But then throw a roadblock. In the Robinson family. From getting justice. With that same court system. Y'all didn't hear me. Y'all didn't hear me. You got to be. A very evil person. To use the court system. For your benefit. And to get justice. All for yourself. But don't want the Robinson family to get justice for Shanquilla Robinson. Justice and crime. Family, let me tell y'all. Let me show y'all right now. I tell you what. Let me show y'all what I think right now about Khalil and his mother right about now because see this right here is really tripping me out let me show y'all what i think about khalil and his mother right now this is exactly what i think about khalil and his mother right now because see she wanted justice for her crime but then they don't want to help get justice for shaquilla's crime because they got all the answers and the key. But 
they don't want to do that. This is what I feel about them. Uh-huh. This is exactly how I feel about him and his mama right about now. Yes, that's it right there. Just straight trash. Mm-hmm. How you going to fix your mouth to want justice for yourself and not Shanquilla? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, that's what I can't understand. How can you fix your mouth to have Want the justice for your son, but excuse me, yeah, you you want the justice for you, but you don't want your son to go to jail. That beats all I ever heard, family. That beats all I ever heard. How can she fix her mouth to not? Well, justice for Shanquilla. She might as well fix her mouth like that. Because, look at it, family. She knows by now everything. But she still ain't speaking up for Shanquilla to get justice. But she wanted that same justice. Mm-hmm. You got to be some type of evil. You have to be a very evil person to use the court system for your benefit and to get justice for yourself, but then throw roadblocks and monkey wrenches inside of the Robinson family justice and from using the same courtroom in North Carolina to benefit Shanquilla's justice. Wow. Why didn't Khalil mother tell Shanquilla mother during that visit? Why did she forget to tell Shanquilla's mother during that visit that she went over to Shanquilla's mother's house? Why did they forget to tell them that she was a victim of a crime herself and that she know what it feels like to be victimized in a crime. That she knows what it feels like to be a victim in a crime. And that she wants to have Khalil to go head on and be honest. Rather he gets time or not that much time for being the one who come out and be honest. Why did they forget to tell Miss Robinson when they went over there? That they was a victim of a crime. That she was a victim of a crime. And she know how it feels to be a victim of a crime. Why didn't she do that? Why did she forget to do that? See, since Khalil mother liked to. Khalil and his mother, they like to play selfish justice games. Yeah, they like to play selfish justice games. Since Khalil and his mother want to have other criminals go to jail but she don't want her son who is a deleter to go to jail see she wants mr wells the man who so-called uh did something to her she want him to go to jail but she don't want her son to go to jail and be held accountable the man just took her car her son deleted someone he deleted Shanquilla. But she don't want him to be held accountable for deleting someone. But she wants someone to be held accountable for taking her car. She wanted the justice system to give Mr. Wells time. She wanted him to go to jail. She wanted him to go to prison and all that just for taking her car. But she don't want her son, who is a deleter and a criminal, to go to jail or prison for deleting her daughter, which is Shanquilla Robs. Come on now. Since Khalil and his mother 
like throwing roadblocks in Shankula Justice because that's basically what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's throw some monkey wrenches inside this 2004 situation. Uh-huh. Because, see, I believe Mr. Wells. I really do. I believe Mr. Wells because Mr. Wells said that uh, he did not take her car. He said she gave him her car. And I believe he most likely gave, she gave him that car. You know why, family? I, how do I know that Mr. Wells didn't ride up there with her to the dentist's office? How do I know he wasn't in that car with her? Because I feel quite strange that she said she walked in there. This man, she said that the man had a pow pow on her and that he told her, give me your purse. And then she just looked at him and just walked off and went inside the dentist's office. No, she was supposed to say this man came to the car with his pow pow to me and my kid. And I had to run it. I grabbed my kid and I had to run inside of this dentist's office because I was scared for my life. She had on that that she was scared for her life on that little transcript we just read from that appeal paper. But then she said she walked in there dentist's office. If you are scared for your life, you running like hell. You is not walking with your purse. And he done said, give me your purse. And she going to look at him and don't give him her purse. And she just going to walk inside the dentist's office. And he took off in her car. That story stinks to high sky. I believe, Mr. Wells, that's why he don't want her case mixed in with the other case. Because he said he will take the rap for the other three cases, okay? He will. He didn't say he'll take the rap for it. What he said was he don't mind those cases about the three ladies or whatever that he had robbed them at uh, some type of shopping center or whatever he did with them. And then he went into the restaurant and, yes, he made them empty out the money and stuff out the cash register and all that. He said, but her, uh-uh, he, her, she telling the tale. He said she gave him her car. That's what he said. So how we know that wasn't your boyfriend? How we know, uh, since, see, since you and Khalil like to throw monkey wrenches in people's justice and monkey wrenches in people's situation, we throwing one in yours. How do we know that wasn't your boyfriend that you gave that car to? Because I'm t it's just my opinion because I was reading the thing. Now, this all is public records. It's on uh, the public docket records. You can go in. Anybody can pull it up and look at it and read it or do whatever they got to do. And I have a right to my opinion to what I read in that docket. And to me, it don't sound like he was a big threat because you said that he was a threat to you. I don't see where he was a threat to you because you say you walked off and went into the dentist's office. If you that scared and you feel that threatened, you supposed to have been running inside that dentist's office and calling 911. So how we know that ain't your boyfriend? How we know that that person, you said you ain't never seen the person before. How we know that? You said you ain't seen Mr. Wells before. How we know that Mr. Wells said you gave him his car? I believe him. I do. I do. It, this story stinks to high sky on your end. Now, I do believe the other ladies. Now, don't get me wrong, family. I do believe that what happened to those other ladies the day before that they said he did something to, I believe them. But this one right here, it's hard for me to believe her story. You know why? Because, see, Khalil switches stories all the time. Yeah, he good at switching all kind of stories and carrying on, too. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that in a minute because he's so good at switching stories. Wonder where he got that from. Wonder where Khalil got switching stories from. Mm hmm. That's why it's hard for me to believe what this right here is saying because Khalil learned switching stories from somewhere and it had to be from her because, see, he learned how to get over on people, how to use people because. He got that from her. He got that from her learning how to use people because, remember, she used the court system for her benefit when a crime happened to her. But she don't want the Robinson family to use that same court system in North Carolina so that Chinquilla can get justice. Mm-hmm. So that's why I said Khalil is a master at switching stories, and most likely he got it from her. I wonder where he got it from. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's hard to me to believe that that 2004 story is true. Because, see, she went to the Robinson's house with her son, Khalil, who is a criminal and a deleter. And they both sat in the Robinson's house while her deleter son lied in the Robinson's family face, saying Shanquilla passed of alcohol poisoning, knowing that him and the other five 
deleted Shanquilla, attacked her and deleted her. But Khalil's mother, Komika, never came back to the Robinson house to clear up her son's lie. She never came back to the Robinsons to offer condolences to the Robinson family for their loss of Shanquilla. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Her and Khalil instead packed up their house and fled. So, I don't believe that 2004 story that happened to her. Mm -mm. I believe she did get that man in that car. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because, see, they love switching stories. So, how do I know she didn't switch the story on Mr. Wells? Because, see, Khalil loves switching stories. He switched in Quilla's story. Talking about some alcohol poison. She ain't had no alcohol poison. Actually, they all had attacked jumped and deleted Shanquilla. So he switched that story. How did I know she didn't switch the story on Mr. Wells back in 2004 about he took her car and he asked for her purse and she didn't get him her purse. She just kept on walking and went into the dentist office and called 911. Girl, that thing stinks to high heaven. Yes. Oh, backyard trash. She do switch stories too. Yeah, because Khalil got it from somewhere. I believe that story on Mr. Wells was switched. I got a right to my opinion. It's public records. I got a right to react to that public record we just seen. And I'm reacting to it and I'm saying that I think that Backyard Barbie lied. The bunch of trash. Bunch of trash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's quite strange that she didn't come back to the Robinson's house to correct that story of her son deleting Shanquilla. It was not no alcohol poison that they deleted. Why didn't she convince Shin um, Khalil to tell about Shanquilla's death the right way and tell what really happened? And maybe he would have got less time and then the other five got more time. But... By her being a victim of a crime, it seems like she would have at least convinced this boy to come out and tell the truth. But she didn't. Instead, she, her and Khalil packed up their house and jetted and left the house empty and fled and went underground. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to give Khalil and his mother the same energy that they gave the public and they're giving the Robinson family that they don't care. So, they giving the Robinsons that energy. I'm giving them that energy. I don't believe that story in 2004. No, I don't. I don't believe it. I think she tried to set Mr. Wells up. That's what I think. I believe it might have been a boyfriend because she sure walked in that car. He, if anybody come up to y'all and say, give me your purse, and they got a weapon, and they saying, give me your purse, and you know they taking your car, and now you going to be running. You going to be running. She said she walked in there. She got her kid, and she walked in there, and he said, give me your purse, and she just kept on walking, didn't give him the purse, so he... She left the keys in the car, and he took the car. He said that's a lie. She gave him that car. Mm-hmm. So, see, sound like she switched stories, too. That's what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Because she was too calm for me. Kept walking like he wasn't a real threat. Because, see, when you walk off from a, a person like that, who you say that just came up to you and say, Give me your purse. And all that, and they got a weapon at your head, or they got a weapon on you and all that stuff. She talking about, but I ain't see the weapon, but he said he had one. I believe that. See, that's where Khalil get all that switching story from. I don't believe nothing she said. I don't believe nothing that backyard barber say. I really don't. I don't believe that that man did that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I do believe those other victims, though. I really do. I believe the day before, whatever they said he did, I believe he did that. But as far as it comes to the trash, I don't believe the backyard barbie trash. No, I don't. And I don't believe her backyard kin either. No, I don't. Mm-mm. Kamika's story sounds suspect to me. It really do. And Khalil Mama raised all that noise against Mr. Wells. Oh, she oh she was hyped, family. She done raised all that noise about Mr. Wells. 
robbing her and all that because she want him to be held accountable and do some time but she not raising that same noise about her son Khalil who deleted Shanquilla and attacked Shanquilla down there in that villa she don't want him to be held accountable for that brutal crime but she do want Mr. Wells to be accountable for stealing her car or taking her car he said she gave it to him I believe him uh huh I sure do she hasn't even convinced Khalil to come out and tell the truth. So Shanquilla can get that same justice she got. This trifling backyard Barbie is despicable, and her son is too. Yes, 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 yes. This is so sad. This is so sad. You know? And what's crazy, what's tripping me out, family, is that it's bad when a criminal don't want to be bothered with you in court because he said he don't want her case nowhere near his case. That's bad when a criminal don't want a backyard barber included in their case. He said, uh-uh, don't put, uh-uh, she lying. Her case need to be separate. Let's do her case in a separate trial. Don't put her with these people right here. That automatically tell you right there that he real serious about her lying. He said she gave him that car. Mm -hmm. But see, the court went on ahead and added it in there anyway. But I'm just her her story really sounds suspect. Family, he willing to take accountability for the other things that he did the day before, but he wants nothing to do with the backyard barber up there on that screen. Uh uh, that's real sad when a criminal throw you away. Mm hmm, mm hmm. He said she gave me that car. But anyway. Shaquilla, you know, Shaquilla even went on trips and stuff with Khalil and his mother. Shaquilla even went on trips with these people. So his mother even knew Shaquilla. And she still refused to do the right thing and talk her son into telling the truth about what happened. She don't want the court system to do anything about her son. She don't want her son to be held accountable at all, but she wanted that other man to be held accountable for taking her car. So she wanted to use the justice system for her and her only. She don't want the justice system to be used for the Robinson family so they can get justice for Shanquilla. Y'all see where the low down trifling stuff is? And you wonder why Khalil's so trifling? There you go. There's your answer right there. There's your answer right there up on that doggone screen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, remember this, family. Shanquilla thought Khalil Cook was her best friend. But always remember this, family. A best friend's Best friends are hard to find because the very best is already within you. Y'all didn't hear me. Let me say that again. Best friends are hard to find because the very best is already within you. That's all I got to say about that. Gain knowledge to prevent blocking. And we all know what that means. The more you know, the harder it is for anybody to block you out from your goals and success. Bye-bye.